Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we're going to compute the following two sums. So the first sum is the sum from zero to infinity of one over n squared plus x squared, where x is a non-zero real number. And the second sum is the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared. Now, we're going to obtain the second sum using the, the first sum. Okay, so let's denote the first sum by s of x and the second one is simply z of 2. Okay, so we're going to compute the first sum using Fourier series. Now, obviously, the second sum is convergent. Now, let's look at the convergence for the uh, first sum. Now, we, we know that the general term of the first series is uh, bounded above by the general term of the second series. So, because the second series is convergent, so is the first series. So now, let's compute S of X. Okay, so to compute S of X, we're going to use series, uh, Fourier series. So we're going to consider a function. So the function F, that is 2 pi periodic, and whose restriction on the interval negative pi pi is defined by f of t equals e to the x t. Here x is the number that appears in the definition of our first series. So we want to find the Fourier coefficients of this function. They are, of course, given by the formula c sub n equals 1 over 2 pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of f of t times e to the negative i n t dt. Okay, now we just need to plug f of t in the formula and compute. Now, using properties of exponential, we can write this as a single exponential. So, we're going to get e to the x minus i n times t. Okay, now we just integrate. An antiderivative of e to the kt, where k is non-zero, is given by e to the kt divided by k. So, this is going to be e to the x minus i n times t divided by 2 pi times x minus i n, which we're going to evaluate between negative pi and pi. Okay, now we just need to evaluate. After evaluating, we're going to get the following. Now we use Euler's formula to evaluate e to the negative i n, i n pi and e to the i n pi. They are both equal to negative 1 to the n. Okay, so we just need to factor that out. Now, we want to write e to the x pi minus e to the negative x pi divided by 2 as the hyperbolic sine of x pi. Okay. Now, what we want to do is use Percival's identity. Using Percival's identity, so we're going to have that 2 pi times the sum as n goes from negative infinity to infinity of the square of the modulus of c sub n is equal to the integral from negative pi to pi of f of t squared dt. Now we just need to compute. Okay, so now let's run the, the formula. So on the left-hand side, we're going to get uh, 2 times uh, the square of the hyperbolic sign evaluated at x, at x pi divided by pi times x squared plus n squared. And on the right-hand side, we're going to get uh, an antiderivative of, of e to the 2xt uh, evaluated uh, between negative pi and pi. So we're going to get uh, e to the 2x pi minus e to the negative 2x pi divided by 2x. Okay, so we want to write this as the hyperbolic sign of 2x pi divided by x, and then use the fact that the hyperbolic sign of 2t is 2 times the hyperbolic sign of t times the hyperbolic cosine of t. Okay, and then divide both sides by, by uh, 2 times the hyperbolic uh, sign of xt squared, and multiply both sides by pi. So if we do all of that, we're going to get the following. Okay, so we're going to get that the sum as n goes from negative infinity to infinity of 1 over x squared plus n squared is equal to pi times 
hyperbolic sine of x pi times hyperbolic cosine of x pi divided by x times uh, the square of the hyperbolic sine of x pi. Now we just need to simplify. And, okay, so what we're trying to do here is get a sum that starts at zero and goes all the way to infinity. But we have a sum that goes from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, and we see that in our formula, we have n squared. n squared, uh, that's an even term. I mean, uh, an even function, if you want, of n. So n squared is going to appear twice in this formula if we take the sum from 0 to infinity. The only term that appears once is the term corresponding to n equals 0. So we're going to add that, to that term to both sides so that we have it twice on the left-hand side. So we add 1 over x squared on both sides, and we simplify the, the right-hand side. Okay, now, if we combine everything on the left-hand side, we're going to get twice the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. Okay, so we get twice the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus n squared. Okay, now we just need to divide it both sides by 2. And we're going to get exactly s of x. Okay, so s of x is simply pi over 2x times the hyperbolic cos uh, cotangent of pi x plus 1 over 2x squared. Okay, now we can solve Basel problem using this identity. Okay, in order to solve Basel problem, what we want to do first is isolate the, uh, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity on the left-hand side. So we're going to get the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over uh, n squared plus x squared plus 1 over x squared. And then subtract 1 over x squared uh, from both sides. Okay, we're going to get that. Now, what we want to do is take the limit on both sides. Okay, we want to take the limit. As we take the limit, we get the following. Okay, what I want to do now is uh, uh, make a change of variable on the right-hand side, just to make things easier. So I'm going to set that t is equal to pi x. And on the left-hand side, of course, we're going to get the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Okay, so now we're going to uh, set t equals pi x, and the, the right-hand side is going to become pi squared over 2 times the limit as t goes to 0 of 1 over t times hyperbolic, uh, hyperbolic cotangent of t minus 1 over t squared. Okay, now we just want to Write this as a single fraction and use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so writing this as a single fraction, we see that we have an indeterminate form of, of the type 0 over 0, so we can use L'Hopital's rule. We differentiate uh, the numerator, and we also differentiate the denominator. As we do, we get uh, t sine of t divided by t squared, uh, t sine h of t divided by t squared, cosine h of t plus 2t sine h of t. Now, again, we can differentiate this. We can, we can apply L'Hopital's rule a second time. Okay, so, uh, but before we do, we're going to simplify uh, the numerator, divide the numerator and the denominator by t. Okay, so we get that. Now we apply L'Hopital's rule once more. And we get pi squared over 2 times the limit as t to, uh, tends to 0, of the derivative of sine h of t divided by the derivative of t cosine h of t plus 2 sine h of t. So after taking the derivative, we're going to get uh, the following. Now, if we take the limit, we're going to get 1 third. 1 third times pi squared over 2. So the answer is exactly pi squared over 6. Okay, so... This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like, and I'll see you next time. Bye.